today we're going to talk about uh, Axure 8 Beta. This is very exciting because we're all been waiting for the release of at least to be able to play with the beta. How many of you have downloaded the beta? Good. How many of you have played with it? Okay, good. Sometimes you download it, you don't play with it. Um, cool. Um, I actually waited for a little bit because I wasn't really sure if it was going to take over my um, Azure 7. Um, and th that's why I hesitated. But then the meetup kept coming closer and closer. And I said, no, I have to find a computer where I can just screw it up and still <laughs> be able to play with it. So the really, really good news is that you actually would get two versions. You can still run your seven, uh, version seven, and you will still run, uh, you can run Azure 8. Um, so if anyone had any anxiety about that, now you know, and you have no excuse not to download it. Uh, it's going to show with no color, which I thought it was kind of cool. OK, very good. Um, so what I'm going to do today, uh, and in the interest of time, um, I'm going to keep it a little bit short. But that's all right, because there's plenty of meetups to, <laughs> to come. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison between the interface that we currently have in Azure 7 to what is um, in Axure 8. Um, just to kind of start touching the waters and being like, yeah, I think I can try that. Um, so mm, this is what we currently have uh, in Axure 7. OK, um, just really, really quick for those of you that are new, and sometimes I do get people I've never seen uh, Axure before. We pretty much have, and, and Leonard did take about, uh, talk about some of this, we have something called the sitemap map here. And all our widgets are here. And widgets is pretty much anything that has a shape of a form that you can interact with. Then we have the masters. He was talking about masters. If you do repeated um, kind of um, UIs, um, micro UIs all over your page. Um, now pay really close attention to this bit. This is your page right here. And anything to do at a page level right here, you can um, pretty much set up. OK, so we have the notes and the interactions and the styles. All right, I'll get back to that in a minute. Then um, as you start dragging your uh, widgets, you can start setting up interactions and notes. Um, and then you have properties and styles and then this bit, which is also really interesting, and, it, and Leonard did go about that, will give you kind of like a sign up of your dynamic panel. So if you have any dynamic panel on your page, it would show up here. If you have what we call cascaded dynamic panel, then you'll start seeing some sort of hierarchy. So that's what we currently have. This is the new Azure. This is Azure 8. So. Did you notice something is gone? Yeah. Anyone wants to volunteer? Pages. This is all gone. OK. And it's actually, I, I thought when I realized, I'm like, that makes total sense. Very clever. So what they did is um, it takes a huge amount of real estate. And what it is is if you're not having, if you're not selecting a widget, Anything on the left is related to your page, OK? So previously, what you had is you could just have all these widgets there. You had nothing selected, no widget selected, and then this would become kind of disabled. You couldn't interact with this. And then you had this huge amount of real estate taken over, because then you can just change page stuff as you need it. They changed all of that. And what it is is if you're just not selecting anything, then we're talking about pages at this moment. That's one of the major things, which it makes me, it gets me really exciting because I did find that this would get on the way sometimes. Now, there's a few other things. They rename a couple of things, and I'll go over it. But uh, as far as the big kind of layout, that was the, ma the biggest change. Any questions so far? OK. Good. So <laughs> this is a little tiny for those of you that are in the back. But this is what it's called the ribbon. The part on the top of the UI, the, 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 the shortcuts. Um, so currently, we have a way to select and connect and preview the prototype and group and lock, and then uh, quickly modify the amount of uh, panes that you can see. Um, they shift that up a little bit, and they actually introduce a few other things. So really quick and actually kind of cool, they allow you to open a new file or, or start a new prototype or save, which I thought that makes so lots of sense 
really nice shortcut. Now, this is something that I've been really looking forward to. The, the tool, the drawing tool, you can actually get it from up here and also the ability to copy. Um, so this was right here, kind of shift a little bit. The zoom is, is still there. I think they shifted a little bit. The publishing and Akshar stills the same and all of this is still pretty much the same. But I just wanted to point out that that's where your drawing tool will be. Now, currently we have something that's called sign maps. Now they're called pages, okay? That's pretty much it, no big deal. Um, we already kind of talked about this bit. This is all going away and it's going to be handled on the right. So what does it look like? So it kind of looks like this. So the area changed to be named Inspector, which I kind of like that name, it kind of makes sense. So now at the right, you have this area that's called Inspector. So this area right here used to be pretty much widget interactions and notes and then all these other things. The whole thing is just now called Inspector. Um, and then you still have your, your properties and your styles, uh, but um, there's kind of um, a few other bits that got added. I'm actually going to open it in a minute and show you. Um, the, the widgets, um, which I'm going to go over really quick, they have a new section called Markup, um, and then they added a few other bits and pieces, which I will show you in a minute. Let me start by just opening the new Azure. So here we are. I'm just opening a brand new file. Okay. So um, I want to show you a few things. So as I said, if you were to drag anything, keep an eye on the right here. And I know it's a little bit tiny for some of you, but it says inspector rectangle. So once again, my focus, I have the rectangle selected. That means anything on the right has to do about rectangles. Now, if I don't select the rectangle, now we're going back to pages. The next thing I want to show you is, uh, and actually this is something that I emphasize quite a bit when I, when I train, is what's the difference between this box, and the box number one, box number two, and box number three? Um, and I think this is box number three because it looks like the color is the same. But anyways, to be honest, there isn't much of a difference. It's just a different color. So Axure has this concept of calling things shapes, and I actually do want to go a little bit further on that concept from Axure 7 to Axure 8. So back into Axure 7, we had all these shapes. So anything that was pretty much not an image and buttons were shapes, shapes were shapes, rectangles were shapes, placeholders were shapes. Uh, but now we start differentiating a little bit more. So. Um, we call these ones rectangles. The placeholder is not uh, what the, the same holds the same amount of kind of similarity as it used before. So just to give you an idea, right now, if you look on the left, this is called a placeholder. Before in Axure Seven, it was just called a shape. Okay, and you can still kind of change it around. So. One of the things that we do sometimes in Axure 7 is that we can easily convert a circle into a placeholder into a rectangle. You can still do that in Axure 8. However, it would change the property. It would become a rectangle. Okay? So uh, they're starting to come up, bring some concepts where you will have all these different flavors, just different colors, but they're also starting to deviate as to what a shape was, and they're starting to define them differently. Um, I am going to show you um, more of these widgets. So, of course, the image is an image. But the buttons are what? They're rectangles, okay? That's one thing that Axure does. They, they kind of glorify this concept uh, with just adding an extra copy in the, in the rectangle with the word button. So these and these are exactly the same. The only difference is that this one has the word button there and this one doesn't. Once I have the word button added in that, it's the exact same thing, except for the size, of course. Um, so as you can see, we're gonna have all of this available over there. Now, the other really cool thing that I think they did, but I will talk about a little bit of 
um, how it can get a little messy in a minute, is that you can actually change um, the, 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 the styling on the left, which is not, it was not the case before. Before you had to kind of rely on an entry point to the styling, which is not, oh yeah, right here to do all your styling. So you can still do some of the styling here, but you can actually do it directly from the right. Um, any questions so far? Okay, it's a little bit of a show and tell. There isn't that much. Uh, usually I have this complex prototype to show, but this is just kind of like, think about this, think about that. Okay, so here you go. You can actually reach your style. So actually Leonard did talk about this and it is starting to get closer and closer to that concept of having a cascaded style sheet, okay? It is closer to that concept of having a CSS, um, so a CSS file. So here you will have all of the different um, styles defined within your widgets, um, and you can change them. So this is actually something that I thought it was really interesting. So let's say that I want to turn this into blue, okay? So right there, I turn it into blue. Did you notice that update and create appear? That is the one new thing that we also added into styling. So instead of having to, and, and that's interesting because there's a, a point where I, I, I go over this not working in Azure 7, so I'm glad they fixed it. So sometimes in Azure 7, you define the style, you think you have applied it to the button, and then you come back into your prototype and it hasn't applied it. And then you have to go back and pick it and select that. Now Azure 8 got really, really clever, and it actually immediately realizes that you have changed that button that had been previously defined. And it says, oh, wait a minute, that has been previously defined. You changed something. What do you wanna do? Do you want to update your current um, definition of the style, or do you want to create a new one? Okay, which is really cool because I think it was going to save us a lot of time. So let's say that I say, okay, so let me let me do this again, just so you see what I'm what I mean. Again, I'm just taking the standard button. According to Azure, a standard button is either transparent or white with some black um, words, uh, black font. I'm going to deviate from that standard, and then it just said, ooh, you changed something. Do you want to keep it? So one of the things you can do is you can say, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead and update it, okay? So now my, my, my default button is not going to be white. It's going to be blue, okay? Now, how many of you have created libraries in Azure? Okay. So, did you notice that my default button didn't update the color? Just so you know, when you create a library, you have to attach an actual picture to it. This is not a little sneak peek of what the actual um, widget looks like. So that's why this is not changing. However, all the information behind that specific already defined default button would change, and it would change everything, okay? Cool. Any questions so far? Okay, how are we doing on Twitter? <laughs> All right, um, good. So, one of the things I did, and I'm actually really, really glad I did this, I went ahead and I uploaded a library created in Azure 7, right? Uh, and a lot of you may have your own library that you piggyback from, so I'm always thinking, what happens? What's the impact of bringing some of the Azure 7 stuff into Azure 8? And it was actually really interesting. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do exactly that. Um, I'm going to show you how to upload a library. This is a library I got for free in the Azure website. It's a bootstrap library. So you load a library right here. And then my library uh, library files are green in Azure. I double click, and there it is. So this is my Bootstrap library. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens. So I go ahead, and this has already been created. It could be your library or you know any anyone's library. Now look at what they name this specific button: shape. Why? Because in Azure Seven, anything is a shape. 
right? So can anyone guess what they're going to name this success button here? Shape. So as far as we know, these are two different buttons coming from Axure 7, right? Now, look at what happens if I were to change anything from this button. So let's make it yellow, right? Oh, it has a nice little gradient. Let's kill the gradient. Okay, now it's yellow. Okay, I'm going to hit update. Okay, and now my, my shape here is going to become um, yellow, okay? Now, what about this one? If I upgrade it, did you see what happened? It's going to actually get really confused because I'm calling it the exact same name. In fact, I tried, this is the other thing I tried, I tried changing the name of anything to something that already exists. So let's say, sure, I wanna change this. Um, let me name it. I'm gonna add it and it's gonna call, be called shape, okay? Uh, I think it, it has to be capitalized. Okay. Oh, it allowed me to do it. It threw an error to me before. Let me try that again. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, let me see if I were to go back to old libraries. Okay. And I call this shape without the extra stuff. Yeah, it, w it just won't allow me to do it. Um, so, I've seen that error before, hold on. Again, let's try shape. This whole typing with one hand business. Okay, here we go, Whew, finally. So I name it shape and it's throwing an error and it's saying that the name already exists, okay? So, the one thing I want you to take away tonight, given that we only have five minutes left, is be very careful when you bring your libraries from Axure 7 to Axure 8, because you can be overriding everything, okay? Um, I don't have a solution for you today. Not really sure how we update those libraries. Uh, I'll think about something and maybe share it with you later. Uh, you may just have to rename everything manually. Um, <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I thought that was, that was um, useful to kind of have there. Um, so that's it. I'm going to stop because I am aiming to stop at um, 8.30 and I'm going to allow five minutes for questions. So, any questions? How about what? Oh, yeah, good point, right? So I've been there. You, are you talking about uploading it to Axure? Yeah. I have not heard anything about the, the file, file sizes limit changing. Um, last time, I think it was 250 megabytes where you cannot upload it to Axure anymore. Does anyone know anything about this? No? Okay. How was that? Yeah, of course you can run it and upload it into a host uh, or a server. From the web, oh, that's right, I've done that before, right. So if you go into Axure and sign up and then manually upload it into Axure into the project folder that you want, you can still, yeah, that's a good tip, yeah, I've done that before. You can still upload a, a bigger than 250. Um, it's from the client, it's from the actual Axure kind of tool, which is the one up here that you have the limitations. So I guess mm, the biggest piece of advice is um, optimize your images. Yes. Now, who's going to download the beta from seeing this presentation? Nice, good, good. I'm glad, I'm glad I got you there. That's exactly why I did this. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for listening to me and I hope that was very, very helpful. Good.